Coming at you full fledged. It's your boy Rage Man Rich with another video for y'all on this Wednesday afternoon, man. What's good with it? What's up with y'all? How y'all doing? I'm good, man. Y'all see me with the new cut, man. I'm feeling good. You know what I'm saying? I just had to drop another video for y'all. And this one, this one right here, man. I just did some research on one, and I'm excited for this one. So, I got a question for y'all, man. I know it's, it's I got a, a pretty vast audience, you know. Uh, people in the United States, some people outside of the United States, you know. But, like I said early in my earlier videos, this most of my uh, videos will be related to St. Louis and St. Louis news. So, I got a question for my St. Louis viewers, man. To all my NBA viewers and fans from St. Louis, who would you say, who would you say is the biggest pro basketball player from St. Louis? Not best. I mean, it could be best. It could be best. It could be best. It could be biggest. It could be most popular. It could be most skilled. Who would you consider that person to be from, not who played in St. Louis, who's actually from the city of St. Louis? Who would you consider that to be? Now, let's let's think of some. I got them, I got them listed down here. I just did some research here. But uh, obviously, we already know. Yeah, I know. Uh, Jason Tatum, obviously. Jason Tatum, obviously, you know. And yeah, let me let me let me show y'all something. You know, we gotta say Jason Tatum. You know, I said Jason Tatum, so let me show y'all something. You know, Jason Tatum. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know this is a uh, Day City jersey. You know, Jason Tatum. You know, that's the obvious one. You could say Jason Tatum. Bradley Bill, you know, NBA scoring champion. I think, was he NBA scoring champion? I'm not sure if Bradley Bill was scoring champion, but he's averaged over 30 points two times. The only St. Louis pro basketball player, or at least in the NBA, to average 30 points. That's historic. So you could probably say him. He's the greatest shooter, greatest scorer in St. Louis pro basketball history. You could say Bradley Beal. You could say uh, say David Lee. You could say David Lee. He was a two-time All-Star. You know what I'm saying? NBA champion with the Golden State Warriors in 2015. Beat LeBron. <laughs> Beat LeBron, bro. That's crazy. Shamanai, legend, you feel me? David Lee, you say David Lee. To a lesser extent, shit, if y'all watch basketball, any older people who watch basketball in the 2000s, you could say Darius Miles. Even if he's from uh, East St. Louis, you could, say you could say Darius Miles, you know what I'm saying? Some other people I didn't know was from St. Louis, which is crazy because we got some straight hoopers from St. Louis outside of them players. Uh, fucking Bill Bradley of the, uh, of the 1970s Knicks that I mentioned in my last video uh, is levels to it all. Two-time NBA champion. He, bro, he was on a team that retired Will Chamberlain, bro. Bill Bradley. I told y'all that was a super team. That was another player that made them teams a super team. Well, the 1972, I mean, 1973, Knicks at least. So, that's hard. That's hard. And another one, dude, he's, I, he might be the best. He might be the best. I did not know this, and this is crazy because he arguably probably like, Top 20, top 25 point guards of all time. All-time great Celtic, JoJo White, bro. JoJo White, bro. That's wild, bro. Two-time NBA champion, finals MVP, bro. One of the only seven point guards to win the award. That's wild, bro. So, these are the players y'all didn't know. Some of y'all did know those from St. Louis. But that's not what this video is about. 
I was just, you know, giving y'all a little example of some players you could have said. But uh, did you know? Uh, y'all know. I mean, y'all know who the y'all obviously know. Y'all watch the NBA. Y'all know who the Memphis Grizzlies is. But did y'all know there was a great basketball player from St. Louis that's making that's that's helping y'all see the rise. That's helping the rise of the Memphis Grizzlies. Did y'all know that? This is something I'm just now finding out today. And this is why I'm making this video because this is crazy to me. How how close, I mean, you know, you got divisions in uh the NBA, you got the Southwest, Southeast, Northwest, uh Atlantic and Central Division. We got five teams in the Central Division. You know what I'm saying? And that's crazy how somebody from St. Louis is helping another city get big in the NBA, and we don't even got a team. But yeah, this is this is in fact true, and that person just so happened to be uh, they assistant head coach, and his name is Blake Ahern. I be, I hope I'm pronouncing that right because I was just watching a video about him, Blake Ahern. And let me just give y'all some information on who he was in basketball before he became a coach and who he is in his new career as a coach. So <clears throat> in high school, he went to Dismet, uh Jesuit High School. This is, uh, I think this is, a, uh, I think this might be a Catholic school or a private school. It's in Creve Corps, Missouri. So that's out there in the county and shit. So. I ain't never heard of this school, but that's what's up. He went to, so he is from St. Louis. Uh, he, you know, he went to grade school here. He went to Emma, Emma Colada School for grade school. I don't know where that is, but, yeah, he he's definitely went here. He went to, like I said, he went to Desmet and Creve Core. And uh, he, in college, this is something crazy to me because this is this connects me and him, which is even wild. We are fellow alum from Missouri State. He was a Missouri State bird, you know, from 2003 to 2007. So, yeah, he went off four years. He's a bachelor from Missouri State University, which is crazy. That's what's up. Like Ahern, assistant coach of the Memphis Grizzlies. Me with the same college. That's what's up. In the NBA draft, he uh he joined the NBA. He was signed to the NBA in two thousand seven. He went undrafted, which is crazy because just think about all the undrafted players in the NBA. Just think about that. You gotta be tough to you gotta be tough to go undrafted in the NBA. You gotta be tough. You gotta look look at Ben Wallace. Ben Wallace, that's probably the greatest undrafted player in NBA history. Look at uh, Fred Van Vliet, Fred Van Vliet. I think he, he, I think he was undrafted. Uh, and other players, but that's that's crazy. You gotta be good to go undrafted. So his playing career was between his professional playing career, uh, because he had several stints in the NBA. Uh, but his whole professional playing career was two thousand seven to two thousand fifteen. He his let, let's go up to see his CI. See how, uh, well, he now, he's 37 years old. He was born and raised in St. Louis. He's 6'2", so he was a 6'2 guard, 6'2 point guard. Okay, 6'2 point guard, that's nice. That's a nice size for a point guard. Uh, his numbers, he wore number 6, 18, and 2. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, he played for, he had stints with, the Utah Jazz, the Miami Heat, and the San Antonio Spurs. So that's crazy. Man. That's crazy, bro. He played for the Missouri State Bears from St. Louis, went to the Cement and Creve Corps. Bro, he 
Bro, he played for Greg Popovich and Pat Riley, bro. That's crazy. That is wild, bro. Th that, that's that's hella crazy to me. And uh, yeah, this is this is him. So this assistant head coach, uh, Blake Ahern. You know what I'm saying? This is why this video is called St. Louis Grizzlies. This guy from St. Louis is helping the Memphis Grizzlies become a real threat in the NBA right now. And uh, let's just get to this article, man. Let's get to this article that I found. Uh, I saw a video. It's from a uh, it's KDSK article. This is a news station and newsroom in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm going to read the article. I watched a video earlier. This is where I got the idea to make this video from. So let's just get right into it, man. <clears throat> And this is written by uh, Coy Miller. This was made by him earlier today, 6.05, so a couple hours ago. It's a privilege. St. Louis product Blake Ahern is helping turn Grizzly, Grizzlies' Grizzlies' John Morant into a superstar. One of the brightest young stars in the NBA is striving under the tutelage of a former St. Louis basketball standout. All right, so let's get to it. The Smet product, Blake Ahern, basketball journey. Ah, sorry. Oh, this is from Memphis, Tennessee. This is at, uh, KDSK in St. Louis. It, it is KDSK in St. Louis. I'm tripping. But it, this is an article from Memphis, Tennessee. So the Smet product, Blake Ahern's basketball journey has taken him a lot of places. Now it is helping to mold perhaps the most young, exciting core in basketball. Ahern is an assistant coach for Memphis for the Memphis Grizzlies and works especially close with four-year guard John Morant. If you have been on social media lately, if you've been on social media lately, you've probably seen some John Morant highlights. The 22-year-old sensation has been one of the biggest stars in the league this season and helped Memphis to one of the best records in the NBA thanks to a franchise record 10-game winning streak. A franchise record 10-game winning streak. Ahern is soaking it in with the high-flying Grizzlies this season and talked with five on your sides. Frank Kusumano, Kusumano about his team and helping their young star. This is his words. The opportunity to work with Ja is an honor for me. I appreciate that head coach Taylor Jenkins puts trust in me to work with John on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a privilege, Ahern said. He's a great kid, works hard, student of the game. It'd be different if he didn't want to work or didn't put in the time. But he's always asking questions, and he's always wanting to get better. Morant is averaging career highs and field goal percentage, 48.9, three point percentage, 37.9, rebounds, 5.7, steals, 1.3, a block and a half, a half a block, and points, 24.9 this season. And if you ask Ahern, it's all about Morant putting in the consistent work to be great. And he says, every single day we come in for practice, we're working out, we stick to the same game plan before every game with our shooting routine and watch a film every single game, every single time before the game. He had his daughter uh, with him before, and I wasn't going to watch film with him. This was his time. There's times when you've got to learn. There's more important things to life in basketball and let him kind of have his time. But he was like, no, this is our routine. Let's do it. So he had his daughter on his lap, and we watched film together with his daughter. Ahern said, so for me, it's just consistency and the discipline. The young man wants to be great, and I'm glad I get to be a part of it and try not to mess it up. Of course, Ahern has no slouch himself on the court. After this met, Ahern went to Missouri State University, where he became the all-time free throw percentage and leader in NCAA history. That's crazy, bro. Just to, just to go on a side note. Let's, let's get into that. Now we we we'll get we'll get into that in a minute. That's crazy to me, but 
Let's read this again. Of course, Ahern is no slouch on his himself on the court. After this met, Ahern went to Missouri State, where he became the all-time free throw percentage leader in NCAA history. After that, he had a few cups of coffee in the NBA as well as abroad before getting into coaching. But Coach Ahern still can shoot the rock and puts his talent on display against Morant on a daily basis in a competitive shooting game for a fun prize for the winner. This is the closing uh, closing quote. It's a simple shooting game, and it's only 10 shots, but the rule is whoever wins gets to pick the music. Well, we listen to his music while we work out, and then whoever wins the shooting game gets to pick the music. And me, I'm a huge country music fan. I guarantee you he can sing Luke Combs, Luke Bryan. He knows all of them by now. It's always funny when he play when he when the players walk in and hear the country music they knew who won. Ahern said That was a good ass article for one. That was a good article and uh shout out to uh shout out to Corey Miller for that article, man. That was very informative and it was a good article and it was a good video to watch. Man, let's get into the analysis of this article, bro. So, like I said, yeah, yeah, I heard about his history. Uh, Ahern, Coach Ahern, Assistant Coach Ahern, man, he is helping John Morant out, and you can see. Let's just go. Let's just go to uh some of y'all yeah, heard. He is the all-time leader in free throw percentage in NCAA history. So. Let's just go into some of his high school uh, stats and uh, college stats. Uh, I know Wikipedia ain't a real good source in journalism, but shit, we got to use it. What, what are we going to go to? Uh, Stat Muse or some shit. But <laughs> I was talking, but uh, let's go into a little bit of his high school career. He went to, like I said, Immaculata School, uh, St. Louis. Then he went to this Met Jesuit High School in Creve Core. He averaged 17.7 points in his uh, junior year, then 18 and a half points as a senior. He was an all Metro selection his junior year and senior year, and was all state his junior year. And his junior year, uh, in his junior year, uh, he, his team was the state runner-up, losing to uh, Vaishan. Y'all know, y'all know Vaishan in the championship game. So that was his uh, high school career. Then in college, he, uh, like I said, he played for the Missouri State Bears, two thousand three to two thousand seven. His actual percentage, his all-time percentage in NCAA is ninety. 4.7% from the free throw line, bro. And that's 435 for 460 attempts. So that man had that wet, bro. When you think about it, it's five it's five ways to score. It's five ways to score. You can fool from the post, mid-range, three, free throw line, and baseline. That was the five ways to score. And he perfected that. And let's get into John Morant's. Because it's affecting John Morant. And let's so let's get into his stats. You know. They say he was in four years, but he actually been in for three. So that's a little error right there, but it ain't no big deal. Uh his first season in twenty nine in the twenty nineteen twenty twenty season, the NBA bubble season, uh, he averaged seventeen point eight points, seven point three assists. You know, before that, before that, let's get let's, before that, let's get to his uh, let's get to his career stats. His career stats right now, out of his three years, is nineteen point six points, four point three. Uh, rebounds, 7.2 assists, uh, 47% from the field, 33% from three, 75% from the free throw line. You know what I'm saying? His first his first season, he averaged, like I said, 17.8 points, 7.3 rebounds, 3.9, 7.3 assists, 3.9 rebounds. 
And uh, his field goal percentage was 47, high 47, 33 and a half from three, and 77 from the free throw line. His next year, he averaged 19, 7.4 and 4. You know, same, kind of same assist, two more points, and same rebounds, but his free throw percentage went down. It went down 3% to 44, as well as his three point percentage and uh, his. And his two-point percentage, and his two-point percentage, because, you know, he is, John Morant is, one of the best paint scorers in the NBA as a point guard. And the other ones are forwards and centers. So, that went down in the second season. But this season, like he said, he having a career-high free throw percentage, uh, field goal percentage, and three-point percentage. He averaging. Uh, his uh, free field goal percentage is 48.9. His three-point percentage is 37.9. And his two-point percentage is 52. But his uh, his free throw percentage actually is uh, his second best so far at 76. But he can shoot. He can get in the paint and he can shoot. He's shooting 38% from three. So he got that, bro. He got that shot, bro. This coach, bro, he's getting better, bro. I'm and and I'm I've been watching uh, these past couple of John Morant games, bro. He's he's getting better for sure, bro. He he's getting better for sure. Now, uh, coach uh, Ahern, assistant coach Ahern, he was uh, when was he signed to uh, to them? He was signed to the Grizzlies in twenty twenty. So this was uh June twenty twenty. So this was during the uh, June twenty twenty. So this was before the bubble. He was signed as the head coach. So he been doing this for like a year and a half with him, with y'all. So yeah, I see the results, man. These are results right before your eyes. Now his his Blake Ahern's career. He like he said he had a couple. Like the article said, he had a couple cups of coffee in the NBA, but. One thing I did notice on his basketball reference was he, uh, he, uh, let me go down. Let me do this real quick. He shot 97% from the free throw line for the 19 games he played, bro. That's crazy, bro. This dude straight still had it in the pros from the free, from the free throw line, bro. So... That's just wild, bro. Y'all see the correlation between Ahern and his game and how that's affecting John Morant game for the Memphis Grizzlies, the star guard for the Memphis Grizzlies, NBA star right now. Y'all know what I'm saying? So uh, these are his first three years in the NBA, and he obviously going to get better. You know what I'm saying? His stats have increased. He uh, is getting big wins right now, bro. I think they like, I don't know how many times they played the Lakers, but the past two times they beat the Lakers, the super team, the super team, the last resort Lakers, they done beat them twice. And John Rett been hooping. I think he dropped 41 in his first one, their last one, he, the, before this last game they just played at, uh, back in the FedEx arena. He dropped 41 in. Bro, that crowd get loud, bro. So he getting big wins. They, uh, and... He arguably an MVP candidate. I think John Morant in the top 10 right now. He ain't in the top five. He ain't with the Rudys and the KDs and the Giannis's and the Currys and the Jokic's. But he in the top 10 for sure. He in the top 10 for sure right now. The MVP candidacy. And some people consider him the Curry stopper, bro. Some people consider John Morant the Curry stopper, bro. He, uh, he prevented him from getting in the play in. Last year, you know what I'm saying? And it's it's a crazy matchup, bro. That boy John Moran freaky, man. That boy John Moran is freaky, bro. And Curry, he getting in a historic shooting slump, bro. He outside of the scoring race right now between now it's between KD and LeBron. 
It was KD and Curry, but now he's shooting slump. It ain't falling right now. So if John Morant and the Warriors face off in the playoffs, who knows what might happen, bro. So right now the Grizzlies, they fourth in the West. They 28 and 13. We halfway into the season, 41 games into the season. You know what I'm saying? They right behind the Jazz, the Warriors, and the Suns. My favorite team, the Phoenix Suns. You know what I'm saying, boy? We hooping. Chris Paul, D. Book, Aiden, boy. Yes, sir. And uh, they post my postseason predictions for uh, <clears throat> the Memphis Grizzlies and John Morant. Like I said, man, if uh, they face the Warriors, bro. That might go six or seven games, but right now they the fourth and the Warriors the second, so they may not meet it to the conference finals if they do meet. But uh, right below them right now, if the playoffs was to start, they'll be facing Dallas. I think the Nuggets is like two games behind Dallas, so who knows what might happen there. You got the play-in happening between a six and a ten seed, so who knows what might happen with that. But... I definitely see the Memphis Grizzlies making the second round at least, and depending on injuries and the matchups and schemes and how that working, and they might make the conference finals and might meet the Warriors or might meet the Suns. So, because in reality, those are the only four, the top four coming out the West. I don't see the Nuggets, the Lakers, or anybody who competing in the play and making it out the West, honestly. So. Yeah, man. So that's basically that, bro. St. Louis Grizzlies. I got a question for y'all, though. This is the concluded question. Uh, back to my STL viewers specifically. Uh, what team is your favorite Central Division team? We know we was just talking about the Memphis Grizzlies. My personal favorite team of all time from the Central Division is the Chicago Bulls. Y'all already know why. You know what I'm saying? Chicago Bulls. And even now, they got the better they got they got the best Central Division team. Uh Yeah, they got the best the Central Division team right now. They second in the East. Uh No, nah, Grizzlies a Western Con Grizzlies a Western Conference team. They not in the Central Division. Are they? Are they no, they not. That's weird. Wow, that's crazy. I've been wrong this whole time, but they not. Damn, they the Grizzlies straight a East a Western Conference team. But anyway, uh, Central Division Bulls. That's my favorite. What's y'all's? We still got the Grizzlies, Bulls, Pistons. Well, in this area, the Midwestern area. Let's just say that. Bulls, Grizzlies, Pistons, Bucks, and the Cavaliers, and the Cleveland. So, speaking of, I want to show y'all something else because I just said Chicago, Chicago Bulls. I want to show y'all something. Stay right there. Uh, y'all know what I'm saying. Christmas gift, you know what I'm saying. Scotty Pippen, the pen strike, you know. This is 95, 96, 72, and 10 season, you know what I'm saying. A little Christmas gift for me. You feel me? Gifted to me, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's my favorite Central Division team of all time. So, what's y'all best? What's y'all favorite? Drop it in the comments below, man. You know what I'm saying? Drop down below what y'all, who are y'all favorite Central Division teams of all time in the Midwest, period. And uh, drop what you think of, uh, what you thought about the video below, man. Uh, like, please. Like it. Share, comment, subscribe, man. Hit that notification bell, bro. Uh, and I am grizzled up. <laughs> I'm grizzled up. And I'm out.